Hello friends, this is a video showing you how to make custom battery cables. Um, this is from a longer video of me installing my Dakota lithium batteries on Tritea, my 1965 Alberg 30. Um, I just wanted to make this also as a standalone video, so anyone that was just looking to learn how to make custom battery cables made to fit your specific application, this is how I went about it. The uh, the ins and outs and what you need to know to make custom battery cables. So check it out. I hope this video helps you. Okay, so it's the time of the project to make custom battery cables, which I'm very excited about. I've already made one. Here's my first one. Um, this is like monster 4 ot wire. Huge. And um, I'm going to show you guys just a little snippet of how I'm going about making these and um, go from there. So it's much cheaper and makes a lot more sense to just buy a bunch of wire uh, cable and then cut it to the lengths you want. And then you take these um, lugs and you crimp them with this hydraulic crimper. Um, so that's what we're about to do. And um, this is a little shorty, like six inch cable. And this one specifically has a three eighth inch in three eighth inch lug on one end and a five sixteenths on the other because of the different fittings of where it's going to go. I went into my little area and made all my measurements, a uh, full list of everything I need. And um, so we're just going to be working down that this afternoon and making all the cables. So I'll show you what this is all about um, just so you can see how it's done. Okay, so I've already cut this. I used this these little bitty guys, which are not ideal for this size of cable. So if you had bigger ones, it'd be a lot easier, but um, they got the job done. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this where we need to trim it, to trim that housing off. And when you're doing this, you wanna try to not cut through too much so that you don't you know, you try to not cut the strands in there. You might end up getting some, but just go slow. And uh, you can come back on the X-Acto knife if there's a little bit of that rubber housing that's like a holdout. Yes, yeah, so I got a little bit, just gonna take it off a blade and get rid of those. And then we just pull this off. like that and then we got our bare copper strand and you want to make sure that all stays together nice and the way i'm doing this is i just put the bottom in first and just try to keep it all happy and tight to keep all the strands in you might get a couple of strands that find their way out but as many as you can get in as possible so i got one little strand out that's not a big deal we're just going to wrap that around and it's going to heat shrink over it so there's our lug. See, this one already has a heat shrink on it because that end I did first. Let's go ahead and crimp this lug. So put that in like that. And I'm using, on this one, I'm using a 95 size die. And I'll turn my knob, which allows pressure to be applied. And then just start pumping it. And you want to do it towards the bottom part of the lug so that it um, it it pinches out real good. Okay, now that I've got it just kind of taut, I'll show you what that looks like. So you see that's going to press that shape into it and secure the cable. Ugh. And you can feel when the die meets and it's all done business. And then I'll just release that. You see? And there we have it. You can see the, the die marks there. Try to pull it. Uh, does not pull off. Now what we gotta do is get our heat shrink out, color coded, slide that over. Take our heat gun. And 
this heat shrink has adhesive inside that keeps all the moisture out of that connection. So there we have it, our first little six inch positive knocked out. Now we just keep chipping away at our list, do all the positives, all the negatives, and then we can get to wiring up the system.